Now, to, to uh, we white people, we say Rick Ramos, right? The one Hispanic here probably says Rick Ramos, I'm guessing. But either way, he's hilarious. You may know him from his website, unseendenver.com. He's put a lot of time into that. And now he's going to deliver unto you the very reason why I warned you about cussing and crassness. Although I think it's wrapped in kind of a nice biblical parable. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up to Rick Ramos Ramos and how to dig yourself out of a shithole with a shovel, I believe. Let's go. Okay, so the premise for this is uh, one day, for one reason, something's going to happen and you're going to end up in some shithole that you're going to have to dig yourself out of, right? Whether, you know, you might get a divorce, the, the uh, transmission might drop out of your car, you might lose a really big client, but something is going to happen and it's going to make everything suck, right? And you're going to have to learn to deal with this. I know this because it's happened to me a lot. I've been through a lot of this kind of thing, you know? I've, I've been broken hearted, I've been broken, I've lost jobs. So that's me right there. Um, I uh, grew up, uh, ran away from home a lot. I was one of the teenage runaways that, uh, that you know, you hear about in after school specials. And, um, uh, and it's just kind of lived my life by a very, very simple code, right? Back then it was very, very easy, run fast, fight dirty, right? Punk rock shows were about two to three dollars. LSD was about five bucks. So I mean, you had your entertainment taken care of, you know? And anything, Beyond that, you know, anything that I had, I could always defend with just those very simple rules. Now, they're simple, but it's not easy. It's not an easy lifestyle. However, it was the lifestyle that I chose. It's what I wanted to do. And so that's what, what I had. That's, I made it happen, right? You, you make it work. After, um, uh, after high school, I moved to Boston, and I started throwing warehouse parties, right? And that's when this run fast, fight dirty kind of lifestyle started to catch up with me, right? It's not as easy to, to, to do that, you know, it is the best time you can possibly have in your 20s, however, um, a friend or two will die of a drug overdose. I had a, one, one of my friends um, got really wasted and walked off a seven-story um, apartment building into a cement courtyard. That was very unfortunate. Um, I myself, I uh, got in a street fight in Boston and lost my left eye. Um, one of these days you're going to find yourself stuck in some kind of situation and there's not going to be any way to get out of it at all, which really just brings me back to, to, to the premise, you know, something is going to happen, something is going to suck, and you're going to have to learn to deal with it, and nine times out of ten, um, you're going to look back on it, and you're going to see that the whole thing could have been very easily avoided. One really good example of this is uh, the first time that I was mugged, I was 17 years old, and I was taking a bus from Denver, Colorado to, uh, to Boston. We had a, about a 35-minute layover in Omaha, Nebraska. They were fueling up the bus. It's about 2.30 in the morning. I started talking to a local. He said, hey, you, you want to go around the corner and smoke a joint? I said, of course I want to smoke a joint. Well, dude, you got rolling papers. Of course I got rolling papers. Let's go ahead and do this. So we started walking uh, down the streets of Omaha. He told me he worked at the bus station, so he had to you know, go a little bit farther away um, because he didn't want to get fired. We started walking through these, uh, these, these dark streets, you know, two in the morning, unfamiliar city. I was feeling kind of weird about the situation. He just wanted to let me know that he just was trying not to get fired. And then the next thing you know, he threatened to whoop my ass if uh, I didn't give him all my money. So that was the 40 bucks that I brought with me to take me through this two-day journey, you know, to, uh, to go meet up with my family who is now in New England. So... You, there's that oh shit moment, right? That, that oh shit moment that you know that you're not going to be able to clean this shit up by yourself and somebody's going to have to help you out of it. It's a, it's a very difficult and dangerous uh, place to be, but you can always handle it as long as you, you keep track of these simple, this, the simple code, the new code. First, you can't, you can't stop bad things from happening. Bad things will always happen and you have to have it in your mind that you will be prepared and take responsibility when, when, when the shit hits the fan. Take responsibility for the things that, you're, that are your fault and take responsibility for the things that are not your fault. You'll find that the more responsibility you take, the more control you'll have over the situation. To, uh, to my next uh, point, always trust your solutions. If you've got this really great idea and you find out that it works, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. This one is really, really important though. Don't sweat the dumb shit. 
These things are going to happen, man, and they are going to they are going to piss you off. They are going to make you sad. And like I said, you're going to look back and you're going to be able to say, oh, "This is totally avoidable." Don't don't let it bring you down. Always, always, when when life drops the piece of shit on your head, you always have to raise your fist and persevere to to, to live on. And I guess that's a, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you.